Hi, I'm Jennifer Taylor and I'm a self-taught seamstress from West Bromwich and I want to take you through the perfect beginners upcycling project. We're going to be making tote bags. So as you know, we've got to pay for these now. They're vile and they rustle and they don't last very long. So I want to make you a tote bag out of a curtain, believe it or not. Curtains are perfect for this project because they're really sturdy. So obviously you've got your wine bottles in there, you've got your tins. So these are perfect materials to work with. So I'm gonna go with this lovely green uh, curtain from my own homestay. So let's get rid of the granny one. But also to add another element of upcycling, don't throw these away. These are perfect for when you're wanting to make things at home. So obviously I like to make clothes. So I always use newspaper rather than actual tailor's paper. So this is just a normal one page from our local newspaper. And I'm gonna be using this as the basis of my tote bag. Now this is such a simple project. You can make this as small or as big as you like. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna use this as my basis for my bag. And the first thing you're gonna be doing is folding it over like so. You're gonna be taking your ruler and a pen and you're gonna be making a square in one of the corners. Now obviously bearing in mind this is folded over, so you're gonna actually be making two squares. This is gonna give you the base of your bag. So I'm just gonna go with, let's say, five centimeters. Again, you can make this as big or as small as you like, just making a little mark there. Because depending on how big or small you make this is how big the bottom of your bag is going to be. I'm gonna take my paper scissors and I'm going to cut a square in that corner, like so. Right, believe it or not, that is the basis of our tote bag. So now we're going to need our material. Now the great thing about using curtains is that it's already hemmed, so I don't need to do that work later, it's already done for me. So I'm going to be folding my fabric, in this case, wrong sides together. So this is the right side, this is the wrong side. I'm just going to be folding it in half and placing my paper pattern onto my bag. I haven't quite got enough material with me, but that doesn't matter. I can just make a small adjustment. So if I just fold that over and place that onto my fabric. So you're going to need some pins. So you notice I've put the edge of my pattern to the edge of my fabric with the hem on, because that's going to be the top of my bag. I'm just going to quickly pop some pins in there. So obviously you could have done this straight onto the fabric but it's always nice to keep the patterns for later use, you see, which is why I've brought the um, pack newspaper with me today. And we're gonna cut it out. So again, these are your fabric scissors, not your paper scissors. And we're gonna cut. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is why it's great for beginners, because it's literally gonna be straight lines. No clothes are safe in my house, that's all I'm going to say. So I'm gonna cut through this side as well now. There's my square in both sides. Okay. So there we have our front and back of the bag. Don't throw this away, you're gonna need it later for the handle, so just put that to one side and you can take your pins out now. So here we have our bag. So now we're gonna start sewing. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is turn these fabric around and make sure that the, the pieces are now right sides together. So you can see the green sides here and you're gonna place these on top of each other. Now the first thing we're gonna be doing is sewing this long edge together. This is the base of the bag. So it's this section here that we're going to be sewing. So in relation to the thread, just a standard multi-purpose thread will be fine. Anything you've got lying around in the house. You can hand sew it if you wanted to, but if you're lucky enough to have a sewing machine, then it's gonna be a hell of a lot quicker. And you're gonna need a straight stitch, nothing complicated, just a standard straight stitch and you're literally gonna be sewing that sections together. Now, if you're not very confident, then please feel free to pop some pins in there, but I'm not, so I'm just gonna go straight with it. So I'm just gonna pop it under the sewing machine, and in this case, I'm gonna be using the edge of the foot as a guide for my seam allowances. You can go with 1.5 if you wanted to, which is what you would generally do if you were doing dressmaking, but this is a bag, so let's use the edge of the foot. So let's go. That's it. Okay, so now this is your base of the bag. So if you open that out, what you would want to do with an iron is to press this out. Now you can actually do a finger press, just for quickness, where you're taking the edge of your nail and just pressing that down, like so. Now, 
To make this super sturdy, I would actually go with a zigzag stitch over this. Not only does it add a bit of decoration on the bag, but obviously it's going to give it a bit more um, stability when you've obviously got it filled with all of your tins of beans or whatever. So I'm going to change my um, sewing machine to a zigzag. But what I'm going to do this time is actually go either side of my seam. So I'm going to be catching both sides each time. So I'll be not only getting all of the seams tied in together, it's going to be making that seam nice and strong. So let's just pop that under the machine. So I'm just literally straddling, if you like, uh, straddling my seam with a zigzag stitch. Again, it's capturing all of those uh, raw edges on the other side, um, but making the seam nice and strong. And it adds a decorative in. So if you wanted to, um, like I'm using a blue cotton here, even though my fabric's green, because I really like the way it's giving that extra detail here. And we're going to talk about extra detail at the end of the project as well. But that's your base of your bag done. So the next step is the sides. And all you're literally doing is putting your bag back on top of each other. So again, I'm, I'm putting the tops of my uh, fabric together where the seams have already been done. So again, that's the handy tip with the, using the curtains. You haven't got to worry about hemming it later. And again, you might just want to pop some pins in there. This makes it a little bit easier when you're going under the sewing machine. So I'm just going to pop two in there, one on one side, one on the other. And all we're going to be doing now is literally sewing down these two sides. Please don't sew these square sections, these L sections here. That's the next step. If you do that, then you'll ruin your bag. So it's literally just these sections here that you're going to be sewing next. Now, bearing in mind, I've just had it on a zigzag stitch. I don't want that, I want a straight stitch. So I'm going to turn my computer on. And again, it's just a straightforward straight stitch. When you get to the edge of your uh, material on this section, you need to do a back stitch. What that does is help lock your stitching in place so it won't come undone later on. So again, I'm just going to be stitching the other side. Okay, so I'm just going to take the pins out now because we're finished with those. And uh, all we're going to be doing is literally repeating the process we just did on the base of the bag where we're pressing out the seams either with your finger or with a, an iron. So you might want to just turn your bag out just to make it a little bit easier. So again, this is just all about reinforcing the seams. So it's just a zigzag stitch. So again, just adjust your machine accordingly. Now you might need to give this a bit of a tug because obviously it's going through quite a few several layers of uh, curtain there. So there's one, two, three layers of curtain. There you go. So once you're through, you just carry on through. So again, you're just repeating the process, zigzagging across your initial stitch line just to add detail and a bit of extra uh, support to the bag. So you pull that out, maybe get your scissors to make it a little bit easier. And uh, you're just repeating that on the other side. So now we're ready to basically sew the base of our bag. So these are super quick projects. So obviously with curtains, you've got so much material. You can easily make several of these for Christmases or birthdays. So there we have it. There is our bag coming to life. So what you're going to need to do now is get these corners. You're going to be still working inside out. And what you want to do is put your fingers into the hole that you've got left in your bag. And you're going to be using your fingers to press out those corners. And you're going to be meeting your seams together. So this is where you want to get professional. So you can see the top seam here and the bottom seam there. I'm basically meeting them in the middle. I don't know if you can see that there on, on film. But I'm meeting those up together. Little things like that, making sure that your seams are together, really give you that extra professional touch. And I've pressed those out and I'm just going to do another straight stitch. So again, just remember to adjust your machine, otherwise you're going to be doing a zigzag stitch. I'm going to go forward and back, locking it in place. Again, straight across, and again, doing another locking stitch by going front and back. You're popping that through the machine, again, using the 1.5 seam allowance. And now, believe it or not, we have a bag tucked out. So you can see this is a nice big bag, and that's just using one page, one double page of a, a newspaper, and that gives you all of that. Get lots of things in there, so that's perfect. So that's the base of your bag all done. So the last thing you want to do now is your handle. But you can actually buy handles that you can physically um, sew on with, I don't know, uh, wooden hooks and things. So there's lots of lovely, lovely additional handbag handles that you can actually purchase, but I'm going for a full upcycle, so I'm just using the curtain. All you're going to need is a strip 
of material. Now, if I just get a tape measure out very quickly, just to give you an idea of how wide this is. This is three and a half inches wide, and my handle is, roughly speaking, 21 inches in length. So it's just rolled over. It's quite nice and sturdy, and again, because it's using the, uh, the curtain, that's a nice, um, thick material. Turn your fabric over on the edges, the length ways of the edges, about a centimetre. If you press that down, and then repeat that on the other side. Once you've done that, bring these two pieces together, like so. And then if you want to give it another press, you can do. Just makes it a little bit easier when you're going under your sewing machine. And all we're going to be doing is running a line of stitching down this edge to close all of that together. And then we're going to make a mock stitching the other side so it's nice and even. So if I bring you this piece here, you can't really tell which side is my opening side or my closed side. So this is where the folds were, this isn't. But on face value, you can't tell the difference. So we're basically going to be making your handle. And again, it's just a straight stitch. And again, I'm using the end of my, um, my sewing foot as the guide for your seam allowances. So again, you're getting your practice in if you're a beginner. So I'm nearly at the end of that. There you go. Okay, so now we have um, our hour handle. So we need to go back to our bag and just do a bit of um, maths, if you like. So we've got um, our seams together and I'm just going to find out where the centre point of my bag is. So you can see I've popped a pin in there just so I know where it is. And then what I'm also going to be doing is taking my tape measure again and measuring around, I don't know, four inches away from that centre point. Let's just make sure that my handles are even on both sides of my bag. So if we get two pins, pop one in that side and another one in that side, okay, your side. So I can see there where, where my handles are. So I've already done that on this side here. So again, there's my centre point and I've used two pins to mark out exactly where my handles are going. And I'm actually making my handles face the wrong way because I'm going to make a stitch in here to stick them together. So again, I'm just popping it under the machine. We're going to do a few stitches here. So again, you're going to be using your reverse button where you're going to go forward first and back and again. So three times would be enough just to secure that in place first of all. Um, and you can remove your pins now. Fold this over where you've just stitched, like so. And we're gonna pin in place. So again, make sure you're not pinning the underside of your bag. Otherwise we won't have a bag anymore. So again, just folding that over. Again, if you want to give this a press before doing so, you can. So I'm just gonna do a, a quick square stitch. So I'm gonna be rotating around the needle. So if I just show you this once and you're just gonna repeat it, four times. So you obviously put your foot down, pop your needle into the fabric. You're going to stitch to the, uh, the stitch mark on your handle. Like so when you get there, you're going to stop, pop your needle into the fabric and you're going to rotate it. You're going to go down the stitch that you've already made on your handle and again stop, put the needle into your fabric and rotate it. So that's four sides of the square that I've just completed and I'm literally going to go back over the stitch that I very first made. Okay, just give me a little back stitch. As you can see it's got a nice square on there, you could probably stick a button on there to add another little bit more detail if you wanted to, but you're basically going to be repeating that, two on one side, two on the other. Here we have a tote bag I made earlier. Now I've even gone a step further because we are in a beautiful printing studio where I've basically got some block prints. These are awesome for upcycling anything that you have, if it's a shirt that you want to revamp a little bit. Get some block prints, so get some fabric paint and get printing. So even though it was a lovely green bag before, this just gives it a little bit more detail and I think that's fab. So there you go, there's your tote bag made from a curtain and I've been Jennifer Taylor. Thanks.